What's up guys, Eve Business Insider back again, this time to take a look at dynamic spreadsheeting for EVE Online. This is a question I've seen asked repeatedly in the very short period of time. How do I get dynamic API information into my spreadsheets? How do I create a custom API poll? All this stuff we're going to cover today. So this is what I've created for today's lesson. This is uh, trade sheet version 1.0, so let's go ahead and introduce it. I've picked a list. First I started with all the T1 battleships and all the T1 battlecruisers in the game. I printed those out. And that was my basis for it. So we've got automatically pulling type IDs, we've got automatically pulling sell and buy information from GEDA, then we've got some automatic math going down for the margins, taxes and fees, net margin, and net percentage margin. Then we've also set some rules to make uh, some visual cues appear when the margins are acceptable for trade. And then I've also gone ahead and set up a second category of 24 which I've used for items and just to show you how dynamic this is we can literally pick any item from this list it doesn't have to be the ones that I've picked you want to find out how much a gnosis is now going for what the margin is on that you can literally change any item in here and see the dynamic info change so bad news for the margin on gnosis but great news for your pocketbook at the end of this lesson all right so i've created a brand new spreadsheet now and the first thing we need to do is make two subsheets in it and label them respectively math and type ids then you're going to need to go out and get the comma separated values for type IDs from Fuzzwork. There's a link in the description for that. And you can download that as a text file and re-upload that and import it. It's pretty simple. All we need to do is go file, import, specify the file, and you want to replace the current sheet. And you will come out with what I've got here. And on the math tab, pretty much you need to copy out what I've written out here. Once again, I'm going to share the, uh, the key for this spreadsheet also in the description. So you can simply copy that out. But what we're looking at here... These are the components for building our API poll. And so our data for the market browsing statistics is going to be coming from api.evecentral.com. And this is the build for uh, the URL for the call itself. And what we've done is just left out the number for the type ID right after this uh, equals sign. And that's so that our spreadsheet can automatically calculate it row by row. And then the back half of this address part two is use system, bunch of numbers. This system right here basically means JITA. There's one more variable that we'll have to add to the end of it, which is telling us which type of data to pull from that JITA list, but we'll get into that in a minute. Okay, back over here to the trade sub tab, and what we're going to do is start building the VLOOKUP. So for our first semi-specific command, we're going to start building here. What we need to do is a VLOOKUP against the type ID list to come out with the type IDs. So we're going to go VLOOKUP, and the first thing we need is a search criterion, which is the thing we're going to cross-reference against, which in this case for our sheet is a four cell. And then the next thing that we're going to need to specify um, is the sheet in which we're going to be checking for that data. And for us, it's called type ID. And then we need to put an exclamation point, and then we need to specify the range in which we're going to search, which is from columns B to C. That's a colon in the middle. And then next, we need to search the second column of that array to find the data to pull. And then we have to put false at the end here, and that is, um, not sure why, but required to work. Nonetheless, we come out with a number here. And so to expand upon that further, all we need to do is click and drag that little blue arrow at the bottom down to the bottom here. And that is gonna expand our um, math for that particular command and it's going to put one of those in each section and it's going to alternate the requirement to the left of it. So what we just built is an automatic VLOOKUP for our type IDs. Okay, let's build our first API call. So what we're going to need to do is a command that's called import XML. This is going to take a XML file from an automatic uh, application programming interface, otherwise known as the API. It's going to pass it over to us, which is a sheet of data, and then we're going to have to specify where in that data we want our just our one chunk to come from. So to start building the command, what we're going to do is start with... Uh, wow, that's really finicky. Okay. Equals import XML. So what we need is a URL and a query. And in this case, our URL is coming from over here on this math page. This is the beginning of the URL here, and then this is the second half of the URL. So what we need to do is tell it to come to the math trade sheet, exclamation point before we specify the cell that we need. The cell we want is B3. Now the next thing we need to specify is the type ID. And so we're coming back over to the sheet for that, and the type ID is coming from one cell to the left, so this will be B4 cell. B4, 
And then of course we also want the last part of this URL, which is the system tree. So we'll go math exclamation point B4, uh, pardon me, C3 because I'm good at math. There we go, C3. So what that's going to do is build the completed URL with the type ID that we need. Now this won't return anything yet because we also need to put a comma and our query. Now our query for this is going to be cell and the min cell. Um, in order to understand how that works, you're going to need to know about XML. The last thing that we need to do is add these two parts together, or rather add these three parts together to build the URL. And the formula that we need for that is called a concat or a concatenate. So we'll go concat, concatenate, and that will add everything in the next set of parentheses together to make what we need to make. So if I hit enter, cross my fingers, what I'm going to come out with is a price. We can click this button to format as currency so it's easier to see the price for Abaddon. So that's our very first import XML command. Now, unfortunately, there's a limit to how many of these XML import commands we can put per Google Docs spreadsheet. The number is 50. So if we want to have any lengthy number um, of rows containing data, and we're going to have to have two of these pulls per row, one for the buy and one for the sell, you can quickly see we're going to fill up that amount right away. So what we're going to need to do is build further off of this uh, to continue adding type IDs to the list. So one of the things we can do with the um, Eve Central API is we can continue to build off of it. Um, we can add more type IDs. So here we've said take the first part of the URL with the type ID from the left and add it to the last part of the URL. Instead of that, we're going to add an extra comma uh, right after that first type ID and then we're going to insert a string so you need two sets of uh, quotation marks there for a string and we're going to put ampersand or and symbol type ID equals and what this is going to allow us to do is add another type ID into this string so we're going to copy that and we're going to add another one so we want B4 and we also want B5 and each time we go through here we want to separate these with commas but all we actually need to do is continue building on this adding with each line an extra and type ID equals another comma and an extra uh, type ID cell location. So I'll go ahead and fill these out and get back with you. All right and there is the completed formula. It gets quite long but hopefully when you hit enter what it's going to do is output us a price for each one of those all using one import XML command which is great because we can get 24 prices at the cost of one poll. You know, it might make your Google Doc uh, hang up for half a second or a fraction of a second to get that information, but that's great. That's exactly what we wanted. So we're going to go ahead and come down this whole column and just format all of these to be currency, like the first one. And then what we want to do next is copy this entire formula. And we're going to put it, whoops, we're going to put it over here in the next cell as well, except what we're going to do is modify this very end piece. Instead of being cell and minimum, we're going to modify it to be buy and max. And what that's going to do is the exact same thing but give us all the max prices for the buys instead of the sell prices. And that's pretty much all there is to doing your custom prices. So from there we're going to make a little bit of math magic happen. We'll assemble the rest of the spreadsheet and get back with you. Okay so I've built the rest of the math and now it's just time to come through and label each of these. First is a name. Next one over is the type ID. After that is the GETA cell, followed by the GETA buy, and immediately after it is your gross margin, followed by your taxes, and then your net margin, followed by net percentage margin. Now, as for each of these that I've just added in, for your gross margin, the formula for that is pretty simple. It's just the sell minus the buy gives you your gross margin. Uh, for your taxes, a little more complex. What we've done is first added together the buy and sell, divide by two to average them, and then multiplied by what I know my level of the skills to be, which comes out to 2.25%. Uh, if you don't know what yours are, you'll have to figure that out first, of course and express that as a uh, fraction to decimal equivalent and you should come out with your taxes amount on that. 
course these are both hard to see because they're not formatted as currency yet but that does make sense you can cross check that to find that two and a half percent of about 204 million works out uh, net margin is pretty simple as your gross margin minus taxes and your net percentage margin is your net margin divided by the uh, final sell price and again this one should be formatted as currency and then the last one as a percent to come up with the right values and last but not least we'll just use our trick of this little arrow or box rather at the bottom to expand our formulas and fill out those for the rest of the rows and that's pretty much it for this sheet um, the last thing we will need to do is a little bit of stylization so just to show you how I did that uh, the first thing I did is I set rules for this last net percentage column um, there's a couple different ways you can do it the way I like to do it is conditional formatting so we'll need to select all of the cells that we want to have applied to our conditional formatting come up here to uh, format conditional formatting this is where we can set some rules so we'll change text contains we'll change it to less than so if it's less than zero we'd like to change our background color just to be you know kind of a pastel red and if we save the rules on that if any of these were lower than zero which they are not then they would have come out that pastel red um, we can layer rules as well so we'll add a second one with add another rule and this one will be greater than no need to express this as a fraction decimal conversion again but we'll go 0 0.05 which is 5% and we'll change that background to be a pastel green and so if we save those rules we see a couple a couple pastel greens pop out just to make you know just to make that pop out a little quicker to your eye uh, one thing that I do like to do for um, my rows in a spreadsheet to make them pop out a little easier is just change the fill color so one I will make a fill color of the lightest gray possible and the second one I'll just jump that gray up a couple of points and as you can see it just gives it a little bit of contrast I, I like to do that to my spreadsheets um, if you select an area with formatting you can actually hit this paintbrush tool called paint format the next cell you click on will copy that formatting over um, these rules should have actually stuck I think it's the glitch in Google Docs but if you close and reopen the sheet you'll find that these rules did stick and that should still be green so you don't have to worry about painting over your formatting but we can simply start hitting that format tool once and then pasting it over and so that's pretty nice that does give it a, a nice effect at the end and if you like you can also add some borders to it you know I like to add a uh, a top border perhaps and then I like to bold my labels or something like that um, now something interesting to point out while we were just just viewing that new IPA API data came in isn't that fantastic I don't know if you guys caught that but it changed the um, the way Megathron was sitting and it put us into negative margin and as you can see those rules are still there you know I don't know if they'll come back just by swapping back and forth but certainly if we uh, close down this tab and reopen it we should find that those rules did stick and that's pretty much it guys um, you know once again if you wanted some homework for this episode it would be looking into XML functions as a whole how to interpret them um, there's a, a mini language called XPath which deals with building the queries that we saw uh, there's a whole area you can get into and there's other API pools it doesn't have to be just market data we can pull all sorts of different things and this is really going to give you a competitive edge over you know other people who are marketeering and manually going through the list like I was in the original uh, margin trading episode trying to pick out you know which are good to trade and which aren't just with head math so yes it takes a little bit of work to set something like this up oh I should actually just mention as well copying out this super simple all we need to do is copy that whole region uh, it tells us we're not allowed to do it for some reason but I think we should just be able to paste it back over again okay we're not going to be able to but this will copy and paste oh it did there lovely this will copy and paste completely the values are going to error because it's trying to apply a different location for those math cells but all we'll have to do is come into here for our math cell instead of b28 we just need to change this to b3 I think it was and then the very last one rather than c28 needs to be c3 um, and that's going to make this whole field pop up. We'll do the same thing for this one. And pretty much what that's going to do is 
you know, automatically generate a second set of them for us. And anytime you can save a huge amount of work like that, you know, that's awesome there. And once again, just to show you the demo is still live, we could change this from Abaddon to be anything. Gnosis, change this one to be an arc. And that's it. You can see that information updating live. So that's going to be it for this lesson, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you got some good, useful tips and tricks. We'll be revisiting the spreadsheeting in another episode. But for now, we're going to close out. Thanks again for watching.